Dr. Yvonne Maldonado with Stanford Healthcare joins us now to talk about what she's learning about the coronavirus. Good morning. It's good to see you. So first of all, let's talk about how some things across the state are starting to reopen and resume. Where do things stand right now at Stanford in terms of surgeries and procedures? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, Stanford is what, ready and open for business. Both the Children's Hospital and the Adult Hospital are open and taking patients uh, ready to uh, work on uh, uh, all of the health care needs that we see in our patient population. We have a very safe um, environment. We know that our we have uh, uh, had full PPE, full training for all of our health care personnel um, and our staff. And I think we're um, excited to get people back in and get them healthy. No doubt. Dr. Maldonado, we are starting to hear of a mysterious illness in children possibly tied to coronavirus. What can you tell us about that? Yes, we don't really know much yet at this time. I did hold a, na a national committee webinar on Friday about this disease, and we included some of our colleagues from the United Kingdom, as well experts from the federal government here and uh, a national network here around a disease called Kawasaki's disease that we've known about for many years. But this new uh, illness appears to be similar to, but not identical to Kawasaki's. And it some seems to be some type of an unusual inflammatory uh, response uh, either to the virus directly or something related to the virus in children. It doesn't appear to be very common, but it could give us some clues as to the way the virus works. Is it dangerous? Well, um, there have been deaths in children related to this particular response. It's a kind of a, it's a very severe inflammatory response. So the children can have rashes, they can develop um, heart, uh, heart inflammation and other uh, inflammation of other organs as well. Um, and this is similar to the Kawasaki's response that we've seen for many decades. But again, it's a, a it's unusual and its manifestations are not exactly the same. And it seems that it could be related to the virus directly or indirectly. It's not we're not really sure yet. Um, there's a lot of efforts right now underway to try to understand what this means, not only for children, but also what this means in terms of what the virus does to the body and its inflammatory reaction, the body's inflammatory reaction to the virus. Well, we know you just launched a study tracking COVID-19 infections in the Bay Area. Can you describe that study for us? Uh, yes, we have a $13 million study um, that's been funded by the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. That is Mark, Chan, Mark Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan. And we are going to be tracking uh, new infections in the San Francisco Bay Area population over the next several months until the end of 2020. And the idea is to understand exactly what the infection looks like right now in the San Francisco Bay Area, and then track it over time to see if we are seeing reductions in disease or increases based on reopening of the, of the, um, of the economy, reopening of schools, et cetera. So we'll be keeping very close track around the Bay Area and working with our public health departments as well. You know, we've heard some talk about this. Uh, do you know if the coronavirus has mutated into different strains? Well, all viruses mutate, uh, all bacteria mutate. The question is, are those mutations going to affect the, the way the disease progresses? And um, it, the, the mutation of this virus has been tracked over several, um, uh, since it started and since we were aware of it, but we are not um, aware of it being mutated into a more severe form at this time. So what is the latest news in terms of any potential vaccines? Yeah, there's at least 10 vaccine candidates that are currently being in, used in humans. There are actually over 100 vaccine candidates now, uh, but 10 of them that are being actually uh, used in humans. And uh, those are the ones that have shown the most promise so far, safety-wise and also in protection. So there are hundreds of patients being enrolled right now in what we call phase one trials, which are trials which are used to demonstrate the safety of these vaccines. Um, and we'll learn more in the next weeks and months to come. And we're hoping that some of these may be useful uh, sometime in the next year or so um, and, and evidence for uh, protection and 
maybe for scaling up for um, for widespread use. Well, Dr. Maldonado, turning now to mental health, we know this pandemic, it can have a significant impact on our psychological well-being, especially for our frontline workers. They go through so much. Are there any potential long-term impacts? Well, certainly uh, we know that just from the isolation and from the fear and anxiety that people have, that there can be those immediate mental health impacts. We know, for example, from our healthcare workers, that they are probably suffering from quite a bit of stress, mental stress and physical stress from the strain of the work that they've been doing. And we know that for people who are worried about their jobs, about the economy, that there is significant mental health uh, stress and strain there as well. So I anticipate that we are going to need our health care providers, uh, who are mental health providers in particular, to really find ways to address this on a national and, and really in a global scale um, as time goes on. And these uncertainty is a very stressful thing for people. And uh, we want to make sure that we uh, start to address those initially. In addition, there may be some neurologic impacts of the virus directly on people who are infected. And we're trying to understand what those might be. So I would encourage people right, to reach out to their providers if they feel like they have mental health issues at this time.